Hi, this is my fifth video on using this computer program, Mathematica, to understand iteration dynamics in Newton's method. For my Calculus 1 students, I'm trying to basically wrap up my videos for your Project 1 and getting going on that. Um, but I might make few, uh, future videos about this topic that are not so much related to this project necessarily. Let's start by reviewing exam the example from the end of the last video, um, and then we'll get into Newton's method. In this example, we had a family of functions, one function for each value of c. f sub c of x is x squared minus c. Of course, as c increases, this graph gets shifted down further and further. You have one graph for each fixed value of c, one function to iterate for each fixed value of c. But what's interesting is seeing what happens as c changes. You can use your calculator to iterate this for any particular value of c. You can also use nestlist on Mathematica. Or you can use this code that I created. Uh, that I called cobweb plot, a little program in Mathematica. You don't have to worry about how it works. You just have to understand how to use it. How do you use it? You plug in your function, first of all. Again, this is a family of functions, so I put a subscript, and c is treated like a variable here. Um, again, you make a cobweb plot for any fixed value of c, but by putting it inside this manipulate, that allows me to animate it and allows me to change the value of c and see what happens as c changes, and that's what's ultimately the most interesting. And as another animation parameter from manip Manipulate, you can see C is starting out at 1, but I let it go as low as 0 or as high as 2. N starts out at 0 and goes up to 50 in increments of 1. That's what this code means. Let's see what happens now when we enter this. Um, before I look at this, I do want to mention that I modified the code a little bit. I added this option, Aspect Ratio Arrow Automatic, for a good reason, because it allows the scales on these axes to be the same, which is going to allow us to notice that when the red graph crosses the blue graph right over here, near this fixed point is what is called the intersection point, you can see it's crossing with the slope visually. Uh, you can tell that that slope is perhaps negative 1.2 or negative 1.3. Its absolute value is bigger than 1, and that ends up being important for understanding the nature of that fixed point. That fixed point is close to the seed that I picked here, negative 0.6. When you plug in negative 0.6 into the function, when c equals 1, you get negative 0.6 squared, which is positive 0.36, minus 1, that would be negative 0.64. So this, uh, when you iterate uh, this function for that seed, you end up with a point that's not too far away. And you can see graphically, we're not too far away from where we started. As we continue iterating, we increase the value of n. You can see the iterates going away from the fixed point in an oscillatory way. You should really focus on the uh, coordinates of these points as being the iterates because this blue line again is the line of y equals x. So for example this point has uh, coordinates that might be about negative 0.17 comma negative 1.7 ne negative 0.17 something like that. You continue iterating you see the repelling behavior of that fixed point you also see that we are forced to approach um, a two cycle that's approximately going from 0 to negative 1 and back again. The key thing about these cobweb plots is they help you understand why you are forced to do certain things. Why, why do the iterates behave the, as they do? These graphs can help you understand in a, in a graphical way why they're behaving the way they do. I claim the key reason that this fixed point here is repelling is because the absolute value of the derivative here at this point of intersection for this red graph is bigger than 1. It's bigger than 1 in absolute value. It's steeper than 1 or negative 1. Um, if we change the value of c, we can illustrate this another way. If I decrease c so that the vertical um, displacement here from the x squared graph is less, I can change it so that that intersection point between the red and blue graph has a slope that's less than 1 in absolute value, like right about here, for example. Now that fixed point I claim is attracting. Let's see it happen. Yep, we're forced to go toward the fixed point now. We don't go to that 2 cycle. We go toward the fixed point. That is an attracting fixed point. So the point here is that calculus can be used to understand why fixed points are either attracting or repelling. The fixed point is going to be attracting if the absolute value of the derivative at that fixed point is less than 1, and it will be repelling if the absolute value of the derivative at that point is greater than 1. If the absolute value equals 1, well, pretty much anything can happen, and it depends on the situation. Um, we also saw that very interesting things can happen here as c gets bigger. You can get behavior that is Basically, you would call that chaotic, and that actually is an official term. Uh, it's behaving in a very uh, haphazard manner, se seemingly. Although it is completely deterministic, you can completely 
uh, can calculate the output for any input exactly, um, whether in symbolic or, or approximate form. All right, for the rest of this video, we're going to go back to the actual project itself, and we're going to look at these two sections about Newton's method, which is a recursive method for approximating roots, and then we'll talk about why does Newton's method work, and we'll I'll introduce you to some new code called Newton plot that I created that creates something kind of like a cobweb plot, but it's certainly not exactly the same. So please pause the video if you want to read through this. I will discuss the, the highlights. I'm not going to read it for you, but I'll discuss the highlights here of what you see, but you can certainly pause it and read. Uh, the main goal is you are trying to find a root of an equation of the form f of x equals zero, where f is some differentiable function. And it's an iter iterative method here, Newton's method. Here's the key equation. That is a recursive formula. The first thing to note here is that it involves f, but it is not iterating f itself. x sub n plus 1 is not f of x sub n. So it's an iteration scheme, but it's not iterating f itself. You still do have a seed x0, but you plug it into this formula, and you get x1. In effect, we're iterating some other function that's related to f. You could call it g. In fact, I do g of x equals x minus f of x over f prime of x would be the function that you're iterating. We'll talk about why this works in a minute, but for the moment you can read over this example here and you can check this with your calculator. Again, here's the function that we're iterating, g of x. Uh, if, for example, you want to approximate the fifth root of 7, the uh, real root of that equation right there, what you're really putting into Newton's method is f of x equals x to the fifth minus 7, and you're trying to find the real zero of that function. And you can check these numbers that you see here with your calculator. Okay, make sure you pause the video and, and do that checking. You can see it, it converges to the root um, pretty quickly. After just six iterations, we are, um, or five iterations, we are good to 10 significant digits there, it looks like. All right, uh, down here is another example. You can try this on your calculator as well. Uh, for the rest of the video, I'm going to go into the next section that, where I have the Newton plot code. I'll open this up here. Why does Newton's method work? Uh, let me just verbally describe it in a nutshell first. Um, basically, what we're going to see is when you have a graph and you're trying to approximate a root, where does it cross the x-axis, an x-intercept, you give it an initial guess, and then when you, you plug that guess into the... Um, well, what Newton's method does is it effectively plugs that, fun that guess into the function f, even though we're iterating g, and finds the tangent line to the graph of f at that point, and follows that tangent line down to its x-intercept. It finds its x-intercept, and that is the value of x1. And then you repeat. You go up or down to the graph, find the tangent line there, find the x-intercept of the tangent line, that's x2, etc. This code that you see right here, I call it Newton plot is similar to cobweb plot, but it's not exactly the same by any means. Here is a uh, the output of it with manipulate as well. Uh, for this function x to the fifth minus seven, I am going to animate the number of iterations here. It starts out at zero, but we really have done one iteration, so n is actually not matching the number of iterations exactly. What do we see? We see again x to the fifth minus seven, that's in red. No y equals x line, that's not, not relevant anymore. We start with a guess of two for the uh, root. You go up to the graph of f, x to the fifth minus seven, you find the tangent line at that point using the derivative at that point. Then you find the x-intercept of that point, of that tangent line, and that becomes x1, your next guess, which you can see here is a little less than 1.7. Okay, we can continue iterating this and continue the process of going up to the graph, finding the tangent line, and then finding the x-intercept of the tangent line. And after just a few iterations, we get pretty close to the root of 1.4577. All right, you can see you are forced to go toward that x-intercept pretty qu quickly. A um, couple of subtleties here, well, and things to, to watch out for. Um, this places of accuracy, input right here. That only works, I put 20 here and you can see you've got 20 places of accuracy down there. That only works if you give an exact form for your seed. This 2 right there is the seed. and You can see the syntax up here. So 
only if you put 2 in exact form as 2 instead of, say, 2.0, which Mathematica assumes you're approximating when you write 2.0, will you see the um, places of accuracy be relevant. Another word of warning is this code does is not real optimal. It slows down a lot if the number of iterates gets too high. So if you go beyond like 5 or 6 or 7 iterates there for n, it slows down a lot. If you try 10 iterates, for example, it's just too slow. Um, but you really don't need to go that far anyway. You see a nice graph even with n equal to 3 or 4 oftentimes. In your problems, you are going to be using your calculator to confirm um, that Newton's method is working for roots of equations. Uh, without, And then after doing that, use Newton's plot to make a cobweb picture. And you don't have to use manipulate. You can just use Newton plot without a manipulate to make a static picture. Um, so you've got a couple exercises where you, where you do that. You also have some extra credit. And I will tell you that these extra credit questions are kind of tricky in why they are doing what they're doing, especially this last one. It's kind of strange because it's easy to see the root of that is 0.75, but its behavior is strange. Final thing I'll say is to get the, use the cube root function on Mathematica, it's best not to use a one-third power here. It's best to use cube root, capital C, capital R. You could plug in 4x minus 3 over x into that. That's the way you should enter the cube root function in a Mathematica uh, if you want it to make the graph as ideal as possible.